Welcome to Trail Manners, the podcast so dedicated to mountain trails and running that they broadcast out of a 78 Volkswagen bus in the mountains. Who does that? Eric and Joel are your hosts and will bring you the trail life as you may have not heard it before. You hear about everything from gear reviews, nutrition to keep you upright and moving forward, and they'll even bring guests into the bus for conversations that you won't hear anywhere else. It's time for some running adventures on a higher elevation. The old 78 Volkswagen bus is fired up and headed to the mountains. Here are your hosts for Trail Manners, proudly representing the 801 with their passion and love for the trails, Eric Manning and Joel Hatch. Hello and welcome to the Trail Manners podcast, episode number five. Today we're talking with the legendary Ty Draney. If this is your first time listening, then thanks for coming. The Trail Manners podcast is produced every week for your enjoyment and show notes are found at trailmanners.com. Come back often, and please feel free to add the podcast to your favorite RSS feed or iTunes. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Trail Manners. All links are in the show notes. Now let's get after it. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Trail Manners podcast. Today we are bringing our show to you from Roosters Brewing Company on 25th Street in Ogden, Utah. Unfortunately, Studio 78 is still on the injured reserve, and so we hope to have it back soon. Uh, in the meantime, I'm here today with Joel Hatch. How are you doing today, Joel? Doing okay. A little bit down to the weather. Couldn't get out and run with you this morning. Sorry about that. Yeah, but, we missed you. But I'll rebound. We'll get back out on Tuesday. I'm in. So today we got a very special guest. Um, we've tried this once, and unfortunately it didn't work out for us, so we thought we'd better hit it again. So today with us we have an uh, individual with 15 years of ultra running experience, uh, wins at the 50K, 100K, 50 mile, and 100 mile distances, post-doctorate of distance at the Hard Rock 100 at a time of 2846, top 10 finish in 2014, 15 years of high school cross-country track and field coaching, a USATF Level 1 certified coach, has won six state championships, coached 35 state champions, member of the Wyoming Coaches Association, 10-time Wyoming Regional Coach of the Year, five-time Wyoming State Coach of the Year, also has many sponsors that include Patagonia, First Endurance, Ultra Spire, and Black Diamond. This in person also is a race director for the Ella Sensor in July 2nd and the El Vaquero Loco on August 6th. We are here with the one and only legendary Ty Draney. Ty, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like I'm doing pretty well. Uh, not that long list, but uh, yeah, it's good to be here. Appreciate it. You know, I thought I'd embarrass you a little bit by throwing all that out, but that is a really a spectacular list of things. And I know that's just a little bit of it, and that's all you kind of share. But uh, we're, we're happy to have you back. Thanks for joining us again. You know, you just actually flew in town on a drive-by, and you've been to Kentucky. Can you tell us what you're doing in Kentucky? Uh, I had a chance to go down uh, last weekend. Uh, one of my former ath- high school athletes, uh, now Haley Wetton, who runs here at uh, Weber State in Ogden, they qualified for the Nationals, and so did a little planes, trains, and automobiles. It was too expensive to fly directly there, so he went via Chicago and a few... Uh, yeah, anyway, so it's been exciting. A few hours of travel over the last four days. Well, we got you a belly full of real food, so hopefully you can stay with us for a little bit and, and uh, have a good show here. So let's get into it right away. So your races. You've been doing race directing for quite a while. Had the pleasure of coming out to El Vaquero Loco three or four years now. One of my favorite all-time races. So why don't you talk a little bit about both of your races. Maybe we could start with the LS Sensor. Uh, actually, this will be just the second year we've done the Ascensor. You know, I uh, a while back went over to Transvulcania and, and they ran the Vertical K the night before and I just got thinking and we got kind of a big bay window out of our house and I was just looking at the mountains and, and there was a pretty cool ridge link up that we could see from the house. It's kind of like an upside down uh, triangle where you kind of go up one and come across to high alpine ridge and then come right down another and so that's that's why we named it the elevator because you just go in just under seven miles you end up climbing about 35 3600 feet and descending that amount also um, and so uh, 
it, it went well. I would have. I, you always want to see more people come out, but as we, you know, allowed us to work out a few bugs and and figure out a few things. But it was a hit hit locally. A lot of my own uh, high school athletes ran it. You know, so and what I like about it is it's just kind of the right amount of hard. And it's really hard, but. You know, anybody can walk for seven miles, right? I mean, yeah. Uh, so uh, that's, the, I, you know, I'd love to see it take off. I kind of have this vision of uh, visions of grandeur maybe at this point, but, you know, maybe like a mountain marathon like in Alaska or, you know, something to give people a reason to stop in our area, you know, on Fourth of July weekend and uh, check out the local scenery, if nothing else, and bust up their quads. Now that's on July 2nd, so it is the Fourth of July weekend, and it is absolutely beautiful uh, in, in Afton, the Star Valley area. And it's a short distance from Jackson, so you can still make a few days trip up there, uh, maybe even head into Yellowstone. So it's a great location. Um, you know, so I, we really hope that it takes off. And, you know, I, I can't say I'd like to. That'll be interesting to see in the second year, you know, kind of if that expands and we'll, we'll kind of see what happens. Well, after talking about it on this show, it's going to expand, right? Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and the next one up you have um, is the one that you're probably well more well known for is the El Vaquero Loco and there's a 25k and a 50k that one is in August uh yeah this will be our 12th year we've done that time time flies when you're having fun uh but uh yeah we're we're pretty excited about it you know originally you know we looked at all sorts of options I just got looking at a map and I was like I love that area I'd been up there some and I'm like you know out and back you get to see it twice um Originally, I was going to kind of phase out the 25K, but um, we've had lots and lots of locals come out. You know, every year I get people who've lived there their whole lives say, I've never been to Crowell Creek Lake, you know. So I guess sometimes we just need an excuse, I guess. And um, so, yeah, it's been fun. i got amazing volunteers. Everything has to be horse-packed or backpacked in. Uh, it's really hard to get people out. <laughs> Luckily, we haven't had to too often, but uh, it may get you a four-wheeler, a motorbike ride, a horse ride. We had a few take a horse ride out. Cause they weren't super well prepared for some inclement weather. And uh, so that's what I like about it is in just 50K, it's, it's, it's pretty remote and kind of, kind of big wilderness for just running, you know, 15 or 30 miles in the mountains. Just. I'd have to say that's probably close to a graduate level 50K. It's, it's not like Antelope Island 50K where you're going through aid stations and there's easy access to, you know, race event staff. This one, you're out there. I mean, you're buried in the bush. You're out there hanging out with badgers with bears, with mountain lions. It's pretty gnarly out there, and I think that's why it's so special. Yeah, it's a, that's what we love about it. You know, again, it's fairly accessible. Uh, I was informed several times by several different people that it is harder than Ragnar. So they, uh, several, that's quote, unquote, several times. So uh, uh, so apparently, yeah, I, I don't know if that makes it graduate level or not, but I'd that, that puts so. it on the scale. Yeah. It's, it's, it's harder like than a, Ragnar. It's like a speed goat type of hard, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. so. Yeah, it's about the same amount of climb. We it don't, is. yeah, we don't, uh, and yeah, it, it's, it, it runs a little bit differently, but you know, the fastest times are fairly similar. They you are. Know, uh, uh, so, yeah, it, it is probably s similar in that way. It's a pretty deceptive course, though, because I know when you head on the 50K, you hit the 25K turnaround, that grind back up is kind of oh. kind of relentless. My wheels have fallen off every time I've done that. That's that's like, what, seven miles of just up grind. Yeah, and it just, uh, yeah, I don't care how many times. In fact, just uh, maybe three weeks ago, we, I did it with a friend who has moved from Jackson up to Portland. He wanted to run it before he moved, and... We got up there at the top of, uh, got up there at the top before we dropped in the lakes, and there was about two feet of snow. Yeah, it was a, that was a long day, and we just went through, you know. But but that climb, yeah, it's just no matter how many times you do it, you can see where you need to be, and there's just kind of those little false summits, and it's just yeah, it just kind of grinds you down. I think the last time you and I ran it together, Eric, we came across a lady having some issues at the top of that climb. Oh, that's right. That's she right. was uh, in full cramp, full everything body cramp. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the one runner there, he was more than happy to help assist and rub those yeah. cramps out. But, yeah, you and but, I were like, we're out of here. Yeah, <laughs> you can take care of that. We've got things to do. Yeah. But, yeah, it was every every movement was like something new started cramping up. So, yeah, that was, that was pretty funny. Mm -hmm. 
Um, the other thing, the other thing we like about the course, or I like about the course, your start finish for the 50k, or then the finish for the 25k, it's awesome. I mean, it's just real down earth. You got the the Huckleberry soda, you got the burgers, oh, and that best lake. Burgers. Oh man, that lake is just awesome to run just right into after the race. So the start finish is is amazing. Yeah, we've increased. Uh, we got uh, our permit up to 250. You know. Uh, and that's kind of, I think, where it's going to stay because just, again, the logistics, you know, getting people in, in and out because it's six miles just to get to the turnaround or to the start, no matter what race you're doing. And it's, it's, a, it's a little bit crazy and hectic trying to find places to put everybody, you know, and their families that want to come see them finish and all that stuff. And so... I don't know. It's been a blessing and a curse. You know, I, originally I thought of, you know, it'd be some huge race. And I think we're getting more people now because it's not. Yeah. Right. That, you know, that uh, those those things are fun. But uh, many of those races are a huge spectacle, you know, and the the stuff that goes on with them. I think it, it's it bodes us well, you know, our style and kind of throw back to old school. You get a number and you get in the mountains and you t- take care of yourself and have a Coke and and or pumpkin pie yeah or pumpkin, pumpkin pie. pie yeah yeah i had some today yeah. before you showed <laughs> up show. perfect Did you see that no I yeah, yeah. i had some pumpkin pie this morning in honor of you perfect <laughs> awesome awesome and I, and I don't know how you do it but you time it just right and i don't know how, you know what you do but you always have it so the wildflowers are just popping during that race i mean i don't think i've been on that course once where it just hasn't been like you know brush canvas popping flowers mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, with that, you know, how did you get into, you know, trail running? How did you get into ultra running? I mean, not a lot of people just jump into ultra running. So where did this, where did this well, passion I've been a, a lifelong runner, you know, basically running since I was 12 years old. At one season or another, ran a, ran a couple of years at Rick's College. And then uh, I was student teaching and I decided I'd run a marathon. I'd never done that before. So I, you know, worked all the way up to like a good 25 miles a week and, Decided I'd run Park City, and it was about the worst experience of my life, uh, climbing back up into Park City Marathon, and yeah, wheels coming off and all those things, swore I'd never run that far again, and uh, then I ended up, before we moved to Oregon, I ran the, uh, what's it called, the, the Cash Creek Game Creek Race in Jackson. Oh yeah, that that's was kind that's of, classic. Yeah, that's been around for ages. Yep, yep. and it, that was kind of my first trail race. I grew up, you know, when I was running in college and stuff, would train on the trails and stuff. But that was kind of my first race, and I was I was hooked. You know, I thought that was the most fun I'd maybe ever had in my life. And and I ended up in Oregon, and they didn't have any short races, so <laughs> I just <laughs> fell in with the wrong crowd and did my first 50K, and I had a g- really good friend that kind of took me under his wing, uh, my, Mark Bodemer. He's one of the, I think, top 15 guys to ever Grand Slam, you know, and so, you know, it happens peer pressure, and you fall into the wrong crowds, and then it's about that time Outside Magazine came out with that first art- article on hard rock, and that that was kind of the ultimate thing to do, you know, and and... So, yeah, they just kind of, when we moved back here, I ran my first 100, and that was about 20 of them ago. So, wow. uh, and just, I don't know, kind of a one-trick pony. Haven't figured out anything else to do to use up my time. So. <laughs> well, that's speaking of your time, that's kind of interesting. I mean, all the, all the accomplishments you talked about with your coaching, your teacher, your coach, husband, father, runner, how do you balance all of those things? I mean, it, it's kind of, maybe it's kind of nice where you, run and that's what you do for coaching so it could kind of but how do you balance all of those things uh andrew's incredibly patient mostly is how how that is but uh and and my kids have just grown you know i started this my daughters will turn 17 this year and so they just i guess they haven't known any better you know that's just kind of what i do and how how it goes and um I think it's helped with the longevity, you know, I've, I've had a few dings and aches and pains, but uh, I don't have six hours a day to go over train like many of our colleagues do. You know, we see that, that so many guys are battling with that and trying to keep all that balance. So I've tried to keep my mileage decently high year round. Um, and uh, it's worked so far. So we'll see how long I can kind of keep it together, I guess. And I think that's the three of us here. I think that's one thing we have in common is we've never had a problem overtraining. No, definitely <laughs> not. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> yeah, that's for sure. So, you know, you do you do all the balance stuff. So you're in the off season, as far as racing, running. Um, you know, you're getting ready to take your team to California for the Foot Locker Classic or, mm. or race there. So you're getting into the off season. What do you do now? I mean, you're kind of winding down. What do you do to kind of keep yourself either in shape, motivated, recharged? What do you do? Well, I'm trying to do some other things. I uh, recently got a new fat bike. I've done some of that in the past. Uh, that's a, that's a lot of fun. Um, I know it's really training, but it's just kind of fun, something to do in the mountains and the snow. Uh, trying to trying to learn how to ski. Just got a new set of skis, and I, I, I think I went four times last winter. That's more than I'd been my entire life combined. So it is a little bit uh, embarrassing trying to keep up with my 12-year-old, but uh, uh, getting a little better. Um, so branching out a little bit there. I've spent spent a lot of time in the winter on snowshoes. A lot of groomed snow machine paths and just a lot of snow machine paths in general that I can, and paths we can kind of get beat down. And so uh, that's one of the things I'm looking at, actually. I think at the end of February, they're having the U.S. Uh, snowshoeing champions here, championships here in Ogden. Oh, wow. This oh, year. So I, I, and I don't even know either. where exactly, but I, I've never raced on them. I've probably run in my life maybe... 3,000 miles in snowshoes. We have lots of winter in Wyoming. Wow. But uh, Do you uh, have actual running snowshoes? Or yeah. You, mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. And so um, I might come down and do that and yeah, I don't know, whatever else I need to conjure up for the lottery gods and then we'll see how everything uh, kind of falls into place. But typically my training has been kind of backwards because of my time that I spend all winter doing when everyone else is building, getting their base and building that. I doing all the fast running with my kids and then when I finally get time in the summer then I can usually log the you know find the time to log the long miles and so uh, fall hundreds are much nicer on me than spring hundreds for sure for that reason. So do you have anything that that's kind of your goals for 2016 or you know anything on your bucket race list that you're looking forward to the next year have you started putting that together uh, a little bit like i say pr- probably be down here at the end of february it looks like it fits in my schedule to race some snowshoes at one distance or another mostly for fun uh run a couple of meets indoors with my track kids like to spin them uh, relatively fast uh, <laughs> whatever that means at this point um and I'm probably going to put in for Barkley if I can figure out that whole mystery, um, and and maybe Bighorn, uh, big summer project. Jared Campbell and I are talking about in the up at, at Mount Rainier wow. this summer. Maybe that's that's kind of the one that I'm most intrigued with. Now is that climbing up or doing the circumnavigation? Yes, <laughs> both <laughs> the summit and then. Run around, kind of, yeah, and yeah. We're did working that in the on Tetons, it. Tetons, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah, it's it's good type three fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah type three fun. Yeah. So you want to elaborate on type three fun? Uh, well, for us? yeah, type three is the kind of it, it's fun after the f- fact when you talk about it, you know. But but during it's like total suffer fest. Well, it, it can be, it can be. Yeah, the, when we did the thing in the Tetons, I was with uh, Luke Nelson and Mike Foot. And they were went like third and twenty eighth at UTMB a few weeks later, and so they pretty much crushed my will to live. And so that, that would the only be a reason it was a type three fun is I was that guy. It was the first time in my life that they'd they'd be waiting around for twenty minutes, you know, and then I'd finally get there, and then they'd go darting off like rabbits. And then, yeah, I, I I may have may not had a complete mental breakdown in Death Canyon of all places. It was ironic, but yes, it's a pretty place to break down. Though. Well, it, it was pretty, it was pretty, but yeah, it. it yeah, so, um, yeah, we're working on that. It's Well, that would be really impressive if you guys go up there and pull that off. I, I'm, I'm sure Jared can. I just try to just keep up, you know. <laughs> yeah, we, I think I know how that goes, just trying to keep up. Yep. <laughs> well, hey, we're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to talk to Ty a little bit about uh, something that he does as well as, you know, it's kind of getting big out there, and that's the coaching aspect. So uh, stay with us, and we'll be right back. Hi, this is Ty Draney, and you're listening to the Trail Manners Podcast, bringing the dirt and the vert. Welcome back to the Trail Manners Podcast. Again, this is Joel Hatch along with Eric Manning, and our special guest today is Ty Draney. So, Ty, one of the things that we wanted to talk to you about was coaching, and coaching for ultra runners specifically. So one of the things that you started offering last year was coaching services. And within those coaching services, you also offered individual plans for the Scout Mountain Ultra Race. And then this year, you're also going to offer a plan for the Vaquero Loco. 
So maybe we could touch on a couple of things. Uh, one, how do you like coaching? For uh, ultra running, uh, oh, specifically. It, it's been an enjoyable experience. You know, I debated, I t thought about it for a long time, kicked around the idea, and yeah, there's, you know, you can't swing a dead cat and not hit a coach of some or something or other right now, you know, especially with ultra running. And i got friends that are big, they're trying to make their living, you know, doing that sort of thing. And I, finally I just decided that maybe, you know, with the uh, coaching experience I've had and then the, my own experiences in the 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 with ultras it only kind of made sense you know uh and so it's been enjoyable the, f the few runners i've been working with have had, had great years this last year um and so we're looking to like you say expand that a little bit do some kind of some little packaged plans for for different races coming up and to give some direction you know uh because sometimes uh, just a few little tweaks, a few little wrinkles, other than just going out and running your favorite trail uh, every day, uh, can give big uh, results. You know, big changes in, in your in your racing ability. So, so one of the one of your clients last year, he did pretty well, right? Did he do pretty well at Wasatch? Was that your guy? Yeah, he actually he blew a hamstring late, and he didn't end up finishing. But yeah, he was in second to yeah, he was smoking like it. ninety-two oh, or man. ninety. Yeah, and then he, he just when you can't use your leg, it shuts We're, you down. That's a little but. hard. Yeah, I was uh, I was the aid station captain at Francis, and he came mm -hmm. through there just on fire. Yeah, and everybody's like, I think that's Ty's guy, yeah. and he was he was gunning for first. Yeah, it was, it was cool to see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's he, awesome. Um, so you you did mention that you know it seems like everybody and their brother is throwing themselves out there as a ultra running coach. It seems like you know if you finish a 100 miler, all of a sudden you're qualified. And I'm giving you some air quotes right now. Qualified the the coach. I I think it's really important that when you're seeking that coach to take yourself to that next level, or as Sky Jaime phrases it, to see what your genetic potential is. Uh, to find that really qualified person. And obviously, you have the chops. I mean, you ran, did you run in high school? I did, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. High school. Um, you've been in the game for 15 years. You're USATF level one coach. Um, when somebody comes to you, what's usually the process of bringing them on board as a client? I usually I just uh, talk to them about what you know what are what are they looking for what are they looking to to get out you know why do they feel they need a coach and what is their you know their experience previous background whether it be with running or other sports you know uh, several of my clients that I'm working with now you know one came from a uh, pretty impressive cycling background you know got the bug and was like hey oh, yeah you know, and uh, also the uh, my other client that you're talking about he he was a college soccer player you know again an athlete that was just intrigued by it and wanted to get after it and so but I've had other guys too that have said well I've said well I, I don't think that maybe this is a good fit or you know they've gone back and forth I had a, one guy call and he's just like I can't decide between you and Carl you know I'm like well Carl's a great friend you know and, you know make you just make your decision you know let me know if i can help and he it's chose that, to work with that carl goodness of fit between yeah. you and the client that's pretty important it is and for, at first it was pretty weird for me the uh, the 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 distance thing you know and find you know communicating you know via email and uh phone and that sort of thing it, it took me some getting used to because I'm used to, you know, being there with my athletes once, twice, every every day, you know, doing that thing. But uh, but it's been enjoyable, you know. Any, I think that's the big thing was, uh, whatever level you're coaching at, you know, if they can have some success and feel good about it, and and you can share some of that, uh, your own knowledge and experiences to help them maybe uh, avoid some of those traps and mistakes that, you know, we used to have to just try to figure out. Uh, right. So as, as we mentioned, you're going to do some prepackaged programs for the Scout Mountain Ultra and El Valcaro Loco. Now, I, I helped you set that up last year on the website, and I saw the package, and it's a pretty awesome package for the price you pay. So you're going to go ahead and do that again this year? Yeah, yeah. We'll just we'll adjust some dates, and there's a few things I want to tweak according to feedback that I got from different people. But for the smut uh, ones, we'll, we have kind of one for uh, – 
each distance because they offer three diff different distances there and also a little also varied according to how much you're r running currently uh, there's some of that there too so uh sort of customized plans i guess that i'm sure there's a market there for that mm -hmm. you know if, if not, we can create it. Yeah, well, they were, they were very well received last year. You know, I had a lot of people talk to me about them, and and again, to just trying to get some of those elements that maybe people don't know about or don't think about when you know trailing uh, when training for a trail race. So, so if there's if there's people out there right now that are listening to this podcast or people that are trying to make a decision on hiring a coach, what advice do you have for them of choosing one? I mean, talk to them. You know, in today's age, we can do all this because of the the technology. You know, send an email, set up. Uh, you know, I know some. You know, have consulting fees or whatever. You know, if they want to talk, you can find my number on the website. Call me. Let's let's talk about it and and see if it's mutual. You know, beneficial. If it's something that you want to pursue, or we can point you in the right direction to where uh, where you want to be. So. With these these packages, is there a way, is there any interest that you would do like other races? If someone called you and said, hey, you know, I'm not running these, but maybe I'm running Squaw Peak or maybe it's the Bear or maybe something like that. Is that something you'd work with someone with? Yeah, yeah, we can we can do that sort of thing. You know, basically um, what people, when I talk to my clients and say, you know, how's this been over this last year? Has it been worth the money? What did, what was your, what did you like about it? The, the, more than the plan, you know, because you can get online and get on Runner's World or, or whatever. And you know, that, there's just tons of that stuff out there. Was the was the feedback and the accountability piece? I think that's why it's so important to f see if you jive a little bit, you know, see if you can get along. And because in the end, you know, coaching is teaching. I think, and and we none of us really want to listen to someone we we don't respect. Or, or maybe so, you don't know, or maybe you yeah. don't you know, like get along with even, you know, yep. same, same type of yep. feedback. I think that's why that initial phone call is probably the most important thing. Mm -hmm. to, to see if you work well with that, that coach or on your part, see if you're going to work well with that client. Because maybe that client doesn't have realistic expectations. Yeah, it's, it is a two-way street that way, you know, and, and the world's small enough, you know, come talk to me, you know, after a race or whatever, you know. Yeah, it's a, you know, Ty's probably one of the easiest people to talk to. Oh, that's for sure. sure. Yeah, he makes the time even when he's traveling from Kentucky. Yeah, <laughs> we appreciate that. Yeah. So, again, we'd like to thank Roosters Brewing Company here on 25th Street in Ogden, Utah, um, for having us, letting us sit down, have a little breakfast, have a little coffee, um, and talking to Ty. But before we go, uh, we, you know, besides thanking Ty for being here, we do have the part of the show that people look forward to, which we like to call the lightning round. So this, I know you're tired. I know you're ready to drive home. Um, but we got a few little questions that we want to just kind of fire off you and then you just kind of answer the best you can are you ready for that you bet all right go ahead joel let's start them off okay so your f bucket list race or adventure that you still need or want to do well this thing uh the summer at uh, rainier has, has been on my list for a long long time race wise uh barkley tour de Jean, uh in italy is, uh my race list is pretty short and so let me interrupt the lightning round, if I may. So one thing that, that Ty and I have been working on or are going to work on is his website. Now, I built his website for him last year, and I'm rebuilding it right now. And he's gracious enough to let me just kind of let that be my project where I can go in and experiment. And one of the things that we want to do is go ahead and highlight some of the adventures he's done over the last 15 years. So I'm looking forward to you getting this Rainier thing down so we could put it on that adventure part of the website. Yeah, it's uh, pretty excited about it. <laughs> right on. So what's your favorite race distance and why? You know, I've uh, probably the biggest thing is I've, uh, w w when I've been running well, I've uh, done well at indoor track miles and 100-mile mountain races, you know. The stuff in between, I, I haven't really nailed down, I mean, really well. I don't know if it's a lactate threshold thing or if it's just too much like that first experience at the marathon or what. But, uh, <laughs> it's kind of two extremes yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know they don't really go together, but uh, when... Uh, uh, one year, I ended up breaking the course record at uh, the Grand Teton 100 when they had it. So, so I ran uh, sub 
I don't know what it was, sub-1915 or something for a Mountain 100. And, and I had run earlier that that winter had run 438 or something on the on the boards for the mile up in Pocatello. So those are, <laughs> if those are my favorite, I don't know, but it seems to be the ones that I do and, and, and have had the best success at. <laughs> okay, so what is your typical meal you eat the day of the race, so like your breakfast before the breakfast. race? Breakfast. Yes. I usually don't eat very much, actually. Usually I like a pastry and something just a, just a little bit because uh yeah that's been my achilles heel is my my guts and so i don't i don't load up very much on on race morning and, and with all your with all your accomplishments in running and the 100 milers what's your favorite race buckle favorite race buckle the vaquero buckles by far yeah the five-year right that's yeah five-year five year. That's yeah, the yeah. Only buckle that's associated with vaquero you gotta yep. run that cycle yep. for five years yep. i can't wait yep. to get mine yeah <laughs> and i don't i don't know <laughs> buckle is kind of a it, it's a light term. Yeah, it is a light term because the buckle's to, not light. You're going to yeah. have to do some uh, back extensions and some extra ab work as big as that sucker Maybe is. Maybe you can get that on the website, too. Maybe there'll be some sort of special bomber athlete uh, workout just so, so you don't get buckleitis, as my old man calls it. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> we'll definitely have to work on that. I think you're going to see that here pretty quick. <laughs> okay. Meats or vegetables? Hmm. Probably 50-50. I know that's what sounds wishy-washy, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. All right, we'll I, let I, that slide. I will take a good. If I have to choose, I have to choose. I'll go with a steak. Yeah. yeah there we boy. go. Yeah. There we go. So what? What do you prefer? Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram? Uh, probably uh, Twitter. The 140 characters goes well with my ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> you got them all dialed in. <laughs> Okay, so when you go out on your typical run, what do you normally carry with you? What's the one thing you can't go without? One thing. Um, probably uh, my Houdini, probably. Your Patagonia Houdini. Yeah. What a lovely piece of equipment. Yeah, even in the middle of summer up there in Wyoming, you got to take a. Yep, some it's always in, tucked in my short pocket. You got to be yeah. careful. Um, morning or evening runs? Usually morning, actually. Uh, What's the one piece of advice you would give to a brand new trail runner? Ask lots of questions, and then so you don't have to make all the same mistakes someone else has. Nice. What uh, What have you learned from trail running? That's a big question. It is. We can probably do another podcast on that. <laughs> well, that yeah, that's uh, maybe yeah, we will. Here, I thought I was so so prepared for this. Um, uh, enjoy it. I mean, it, you you're especially when you're racing hard. You kind of emotions are all over the board, but uh, you got to be able to enjoy it because it is. Remember, it is just for fun for most of us. Beard or mustache? Beard, definitely this time of year. And and Ty does have a nice one. I think I saw him last time. He was pretty clean shaven, so they, they go pretty quick on this guy. He rocks out a really good stash, too. I, I've got a picture that I'm trying to throw up on his new website. I'm trying to figure out where to put it. And if yeah. I have to just force it somewhere, I will. <laughs> It'll happen, Because right? it looks good with him with a mustache. So. Yeah, well. So we just want to, again, th Ty, can't tell you how much we appreciate you stopping by. I mean, you're, you are one of the good guys out there uh, in the trail running community. I mean, I remember years ago when I first talked to you, it was like uh, you, you totally let me talk to you, you know, right? I mean, it wasn't like, oh, no, here's this, this guy that's done so much. He was a friendly, super nice guy. That stuff goes a long way with me, and I just want to tell you thanks for being one of those guys out there. I appreciate that. Thanks. All right, well, good luck with next year. Again, thank Roosters for having us. And you can go uh, check out Ty's website at www.tydraineyendurance.com. There'll be some stuff in the show notes to follow that as well. So uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you for listening to the Trail Manners podcast. We'd like to thank Ty Draney for joining us today. You can see more of Ty over at Twitter at DraneyTy, that's D-R-A-N-E-Y-T-Y, or check him out on Instagram at TyloteD, that's T-Y-L-O-T-E-D. Please don't forget to swing by his website at www.tydraineyendurance.com. That's where you're going to see a lot of great articles. Check his coaching out as well as check out his races. You definitely don't want to miss out on those. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Trail Manners, or you can swing by our website at www.trailmanners.com. 
You can check in at the store page, check out some gear, hit us on the contact page, let us know what you want to see, who you want to hear, or even if you want to be on the show. Until next time, this is Eric Manning and Joel Hatch reminding you, you don't get what you wish for, you get what you work for. Now go get it.